Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm picking something up for the bison and uh, it's gonna be in the pasture with them. So, uh, let me talk to you about that. I'm gonna explain some stuff on what I'm purchasing to help our bison herd. What do you think? My well, likes to go with me. Ready? All right, so just got back been running around had to stop at Lowe's you're probably wondering what I had in the back of my truck um, that is a uh, picnic table I got um, from Lowe's put some of our cabins this is our cabin home but I had to come by and do some cabin stuff uh, super busy trying to update some cabins and get a lot a lot of work done while I can since I'm not in the classroom but um, had to get a picnic table wife's idea so but take a look here here we go so we got a uh, got a uh, bulk feeder, self feeder, a feed bin. There's so many things that you can call it, but it's basically um, a self feeder, portable feeder for the bison. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this out in the pasture. Um, and I really want to try to um, push the breeding season up a little bit more. And um, so I'm going to explain a little bit more to you about why I'm doing that and, and the advantages of, advantages of doing that. But take a look at it, though. Um, it's uh, It can hold quite a bit of feed, but I um, obviously used, didn't feel like really buying a, a, a new one. Um, I'm probably not going to use it year-round, but um, these can slide up and... Um, I don't know exactly how much it actually holds, but um, the guy told me it'll hold like six ton of feed. Um, I don't really need that much, but you can limit how much you want to put actually in this feeder. It's got a step on it, so you can walk across here, open the top up, um, but and you can adjust how much you want feed-wise right here by using those you can slide them up so um next thing is uh we're gonna go fill this up it's still water milling and then i'm gonna take it out in the pasture and um we'll see how they do they've never been you know we feed them we supplement feed um you know during the winter when there's when there's really not a lot of grass and we put the hay in but now um this is going to help us and we can also use it to to feed calves and whatnot but um right now they're eating a lot of grass so we don't need this as much but i'm going to explain to you why i got this and the advantages um, that hopefully will take place by getting this and using the pasture so let's go get some feed and we're going to take it to the bison and put it in the pasture and see how they do so i thought about it i really got to looking at this trailer um, i was about to go fill it up full of feed for the bison but I uh, really got to looking at this trailer and remember this is used, I bought it used, but what I didn't like was this looks a lot better than it did, but it was pretty dirty and rusty down here on, on this bottom portion of it, which that just comes with any um, cell feeder, creep feeder, anything like that. Water's gonna collect, moisture's gonna collect, and this is gonna get dirty. So what I did is I cleaned it out, I power washed it, I power wash the inside of it and really try to clean out the division part where the feed goes from left to right. Um, I really cleaned it out and um, then I cleaned out this bottom portion. There was still a little bit of feed from it. This guy was a um, cattle, had a cattle operation and he used a bunch of them, but uh, he moved from this uh, solid feed, grain feed to, to liquid uh, feed. And I don't know much about liquid feed, but Anyway, so he was selling a bunch of these bulk feeders, feeders and I needed one, so I got this one. But, um, yes, it's showing a little bit of rust, but I've cleaned it out. I'm going to go back through and scrape it one more time, and then I'm going to vacuum, try to get all that dirt and grime and a lot of that rust out. And then I'm going to go through and paint it um, with an epoxy. Uh, an epoxy, you're probably wondering why you choose an epoxy paint. Well... I know a person that actually builds these. He builds a smaller one. It's 3C cattle feeders out of Mill Creek, Oklahoma. They build uh, the little creep feeders. Um, I needed a bigger one uh, for all my bison, but he uh, he recommended an epoxy paint. 
So I've cleaned it out and I'm gonna clean it out one more time and then I'm gonna put some epoxy paint on it and then we gotta let it dry and then we'll go get feed for the bison. So um, just trying to do some preventive maintenance before I even go fill, the, fill this thing up because you know, um, I'd just rather do it now instead of get out in the field. And plus I'd rather have the bison have something clean, uh, you know, some feed coming out of it and, and it be clean and good for them, so. Now it's time to start painting. We've cleaned this thing out about, I don't know, like three times. We're not gonna get all the rust out, but I think, you know, we did as much as we could. That's just, that's just part of working with metal. But we're gonna start painting this thing and see how it goes on here. So we got the first coat on and uh, I think it went on pretty well. We've got a little bit of rust that's seeping through. Um, as you can tell a little bit, as soon as we see it, we just put some more paint um, over it and I think it's going on pretty well. I kind of like the way it's going on. We'll see, it's epoxy. You know, there's several things we could put on this. At the end of the day, it's rust, it's metal, it's gonna rust. Um, you know, maybe in the future we use a um, can of um, Rust-Oleum spray. I don't know, but a little bit, the color's a little bit different. But um, I don't care. It, uh, if, hopefully the bison don't judge it at all. I don't think that they care. All they care about is what's inside of that thing. And um, that's what they're going to be caring about, I promise you. All right. Today we're gonna go actually pick up the feed. I think this thing's ready. We have, uh, I'm excited to go get a, quite a bit of feed uh, for these bison. I think this will really change some stuff up. But um, we're gonna go to Stillwater Millen. Davis got the family with, and uh, we're gonna load this thing down. Let's go.
you think, Dunbar? Did you find it? Finally got the feeder here. Luckily, part of this old dairy uh, farm, we've got this concrete foundation. And uh, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big uh, square concrete foundation. So um, we, parked, we parked it right here. Pretty nice. Uh, it's not out when it rains. It's going to sink because there's a lot of weight in here. We got six tons of feed. It's the same feed I always feed. It's a four-way blend that I always use to feed the bison. Now it's just free choice is what it is, is used for basically. And um, they're still doing a lot of grazing. Um, and um, that's great, that's awesome. Uh, this is just gonna be for them to have free choice food. And um, one of the reasons I'm doing this, a benefit, and I know a lot of other bison guys do this, is because I've got some young heifers um, that are coming into the breeding age. Uh, they're uh, two years old and they'll be able to get pregnant and um, this will help. Um, having that extra feed um, will kind of boost them some and when breeding season comes around, late July, August, September time, uh, maybe some of them in October, uh, this will kind of boost some of those young ones and even the cows I remember my sick um, cow Dakota she looks amazing she looks so much better now um, this will help her as well and um, to, so that we can have more babies and we can get those heifers and some of those cows bred uh, this will be a little boost for them um, not forcing it on them by any means they're still grazing but um, this will give them a chance to come and, and feed as they need and they'll still graze and they'll still they'll still do their thing like they have been so well that's it we uh it took us a minute to break those uh wing nuts apart there's a lot of pressure coming through on the on the feet on those panels those panels are sliding up it's probably not the best design i like but it it got the job done and we, got, we adjusted it where we can kind of regulate how much feed is coming out of, of this feeder. Um, we're not going to give them too much. Like I said, it's a self-feeder. Uh, they can regulate their own. The great thing about bison, a little bit different than cattle, is uh, you're able to do this because bison um, won't fill themselves up. They won't overeat um, supplement feed. And... Um, they kind of can regulate themselves pretty good and they'll get a little bit, they'll go back and graze and they'll come back and eat. Um, so they won't overeat and their stomachs won't swell up and we don't have those sort of issues. So this is the first time that we're doing this, but um, we're able to do this because bison um, won't overeat. So um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, quite, quite the process of just doing things for bison and um, you know, just trying to trying to do some things to change it up and uh, see what kind of changes we can make um, for the future for these bison. So thank you guys for following. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. And um, if you want to follow a small farm in Southern Oklahoma raising America's mammal, you can uh, hit that subscribe button and follow us along. Thank you guys.